there are two players who want to own an indivisible object. The value of the object for each player is, for, for each player i is vi, where v1 and v2 are independently and identically distributed with uniform distribution on 0, 1 interval. The value vi is privately known by player i. Simultaneously and independently, each player i bids a real number. You make a bid. Uh, we call or denote it as b sub i. The player who bids the highest number uh, wins the objects. Uh, if the bids are identical, I mean, if they're the same, if there's a tie, well, we toss a coin to determine the winner. And you'll see this actually doesn't matter. I mean, how you break the tie doesn't really matter. Uh, and the reason for this is because we have a continuous probability distribution, and so the likelihood that two guys' bids are going to be the same is zero. That's why it doesn't really matter. Uh, the winner gets the object and, and, and pays his bid. Uh, the loser gets zero payoff. Uh, by the way, this is a, a sort of a standard first price uh, auction. All right? So everybody bids simultaneously, and then they reveal their bids. Whoever has the highest bid uh, wins the auction. That's it. And he pays the, his bid. And everybody else gets nothing, no object. Obviously, they don't pay anything. Um, so if player i wins, then his utility function, his von neumann morgenstern utility function is ui, which is equal to vi minus bi, uh, and uj is equal to 0, well, the, the guy who loses. Uh, find a symmetric linear Bayesian-Nash equilibrium where uh, bi vi equals a plus c times vi for some constants a and c. This is a classic or standard auction problem. Uh, VI is basically uh, each player's maximum willingness to pay. All right? Uh, this is sort of the standard assumption in economic theory. Yeah, we start almost all our models, uh, I mean almost, all our, mo all our models assuming that each individual knows his own valuation for the good. Yes, it is a strong assumption in real life. Sometimes we say, I don't know how much does this thing worth and so how much I should be paying for it. But, uh, well, I mean, you can just assume for simplicity, uh, each individual actually knows his maximum willingness to pay and we denote it as VI. So VI is something that will materialize only if you own the object. All right, so if you own the object, uh, you're going to be happy and this is your uh, valuation for this object. If you don't own the object, Obviously, this VI will not materialize, all right? <clears throat> so, uh, if you win, if player I, I mean, wins the auction, obviously he's expected, I mean, not, this is not expected payoff, this is his payoff, depends on uh, his bid, BI, and his opponent bid, BJ. Uh, because there are two players, I'm just going to call them IJ. All right, rather than 1, 2, because everything is symmetric in this game. So I refers to any player, 1 or 2. Same for J. So whenever you see I and J, don't forget they are either 1 or 2. But one critical thing, J is different than I. All right? So whenever you think like I is player 1, while J is therefore player 2. All right? uh, but if I, J business confuses you of, OK, just Stick to 1, 2 then. I mean, that's fine. But don't forget, uh, because the game is symmetric, you don't really have to do all the analysis for player 1 and then for player 2. Uh, it's okay to just do everything for one player only. For that reason, I use IJ. Uh, okay. Well, his utility, his payoff, is going to be VI, all right, minus... Well, if he wins the object, if I wins, VI minus BI because he will be paying some money. So here again, we make a simplification assumption. The agent's payoffs or utilities are additively separable. All right. Um, so uh, this is the payoff function or utility function we assume. Well, if he loses, it's going to be UI b i b j is equal to zero if he if if i uh, loses okay 
Well, there are some auctions, like for example, all pay auctions. Uh, even though you lose the object, you have to pay your bid. Um, so it's a different uh, format, a different auction. And obviously different equilibrium and everything. Uh, well, <clears throat> well, what do we know about the VIs? Well, the question tells us that the V1 and V2, these are some random variable distributed uniformly in 0, 1 interval. Uh, that means, well, what, what does that mean? Well, first of all, each, oh, and then the question says each player observes his valuation. So here's the thing. As a player, you know how much the maximum price you're willing to pay. All right? You know it. Um, because you know yourself. That's the assumption. However, you don't know how much your opponent is willing to pay. I mean, you don't know your opponent that well. That's the idea. Well, how do we model this? Well, we model this by incorporating some incomplete information, an uncertainty about uh, your opponent's valuation. So, as a player I, I believe that my opponent's valuation, VJ, is distributed uniformly between 0 and 1. So, the maximum, therefore, he's willing to pay is 1 unit, and the minimum he's willing to pay is 0. But it can be any number between 0 and 1. One thing you're sure, it cannot be more than 1. All right? It cannot be less than 0. That's the only thing you're sure. Other than that, uh, you, you, you don't know. You just believe that Vj can be any number in this interval 0, 1. Distributed with this continuous probability uh, density function, all right? a uniform. All right? OK. Well, then. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to calculate my expected payoff because I don't know who my real opponent is. Because my real opponent may be the guy whose valuation is zero, which is going to bid differently than uh, another potential uh, 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 opponent whose valuation is one third or one fourth or one half or maybe 0.9. So there are basically infinitely many possible opponents. And I don't know which one exactly I'm playing with or against. All right? So the idea of Bayesian-Nash equilibrium, uh, well, here, one level of complexity is that there are infinitely many types. But whether we have infinitely or finitely many types doesn't matter. The idea of Bayesian-Nash equilibrium is very simple. Find the Nash equilibrium. But the thing is, when you calculate your payoff, well, this time, you need to calculate your expected payoff because you're not sure about your opponent. So you have some belief about your opponent, which means you have some belief about what your opponent's move or action or strategy might be. All right. So for each possible potential opponent you have, you're going to get some specific payoff given your strategy. And as we change the, your opponent, as we, I mean, Nature, we call it. Right? Nature determines the type of my opponent, right? Uh, which, in a sense, well, I don't know if he is the guy who prefers this uh, object uh, with valuation zero, one third, one five. I don't know. So we assume it's determined by nature, right? Um, and, and so uh, you have to, uh, when you calculate your payoff, you have to calculate every specific uh, payoff you may get for every specific type of your opponent you might have. All right? um, so you basically aggregate your payoff. And then choose a strategy that will best respond the aggregation of all. Not just one of them, but the aggregation of all. all right? Because you don't know whether your opponent is this guy or that guy or that guy, well, you're going to choose something which is going to best respond the average of all these guys. Average. Right? At the end of the game, uh, you may say, huh, okay, apparently my opponent was that guy, not this. Uh, but, well, I mean, you didn't know this information before playing the game, right? So for that reason, you're taking an expectation. Again, although this is not a mixed strategy equilibrium, we always have uh, an expectation in, in Bayesian game. So here, one level of complication is, again, as I said, there are infinitely many possible types of my opponent. 
Uh, but the question makes things very simple for us. What does it say? It says, well, first off, each player is going to play uh, 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 the same uh, structure, uh, uh, structural strategy, which is this. Uh, BI, VI is going to be, I mean, the bid of player I, whose valuation is some VI, is going to be A plus, I guess, uh, C, CVI. All right? So all of my opponents, VJ, uh, whatever that VJ is, he's going to just plug his VJ into this function and then bid accordingly. All right? Uh, I need to find the value of A and v, uh, C, obviously. I can never learn VI before make a bidding. Uh, um, but I can calculate the value of A and C. Well, the thing is, uh, that's also a symmetric strategy because I am, as player I, also uh, uh, sort of uh, supposed to play this strategy. The question is, is it a best response? I mean, is it a Nash, does it form a Nash equilibrium? Um, yeah, so how do we calculate the expected payoff or utility of player I uh, given he bids BI and his opponent bids BJ? Don't forget. There are things you can observe and there are things you can't observe in this game. So let me write it here so that everybody can see it. Uh, well, BI, I'm a player I. I choose BI, right? So to me, BI is something that I know because I am the one who determines BI. What else? I also know VI, uh, because I know myself, I know my valuation. So these are known to player I. Okay, what is unknown? Well, because this is a simultaneous move game, right? We both bid at the same time. I don't know my opponent's bid, BJ. Is it higher than my bid, lower than my bid? That I can't see because the game is simultaneous. What else I can't see? Well, obviously VJ, right? I don't know my opponent's v, uh, uh, valuation. All I know is, again, VJ is distributed uniformly on 0, 1 interval. And thanks to the question, we are somewhat restricted to play linear strategies. So I know my opponent's bid and valuation are related to each other in this fashion, A plus C times VJ. So if I knew his valuation, I would know his bid. So what I can do, I can actually transform his bid as, as, as uh, I mean, by using this equation as, as a function of his valuation. And because his valuation is a random variable, I can calculate my expected payoff. All right. So my expected payoff is therefore, well, let's, I, I will come to that. Let's maybe uh, elaborate a little bit. I mean, you don't have to do all this elaboration in, in exams or in tests. Uh, I'm doing it because I am explaining it. All right. So what do I know about my, this is expected payoff. This is payoff. Remember, uh, they're different things because my payoff is either this or zero, depending on whether I win or not. And I win or not depends on my opponent's bid. Okay? All right. So my payoff is going to be VI minus BI. I am player I, by the way. Uh, if I win the object, what does that mean in terms of bids? BI is greater than BJ. BI greater than BJ. Okay? Well, I'm going to get zero payoff if I lose. BJ uh, is greater than BI. And by the way, according to the question, uh, we will toss a coin, a fair coin, and hence I may win or lose with equal chance if our bids are equal. BI equals BJ. Uh, 
let's write it. So if I, uh, if our bids are the same, I'm going to get vi minus bi 50% of the time and zero 50% of the time because we're going to toss a fair coin. And so I'm going to get vi minus bi divided by two. So this is my payoff, not expected, payoff. Okay. Um, you can always, so this is, I mean, a, a trick if you want to. I mean, I can, I can show you the real mathematics behind it, uh, but I don't see the point. You can always ignore this part because, once again, uh, the valuations are continuously distributed and bids are linear functions. So, therefore, bids are also continuously distributed. So, therefore, my bid being equal to your bid is a zero probability event. You can just ignore this from your calculations. Uh, this is a simplification. You don't really need to worry about it. Again, if the random variables are continuously distributed and the bid functions are uh, uh, linear. So all I need to care is the, these two scenarios. Well, but again, I don't know v, b, j. I know that it's a function of uh, 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 my opponent's valuation. So instead of b, j, I can think it is uh, c times v, j, right? So this is a plus c times v, j. So in fact, I can just rearrange those inequalities and say, hey, look, Whenever my opponent's valuation is less than, so whenever my opponent's, uh, again, less than or equal to, doesn't matter, again, uh, because of this uh, uh, zero probability event, but if you want, I can just leave it as uh, strictly less than. So if my opponent's valuation is less than, I send A to the other side and divide both sides by C, so I leave V sub J alone. So it's bi minus a divided by c. So if this is the case, well, then I'm going to get some positive, hopefully, uh, valuation. Uh, by the way, I mean, my bids can be higher than my valuation, but in this case, I'm going to get negative payoff. So, I mean, you imagine if it is a smart strategy or not. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll see that. Uh, but if the opposite is true, I mean, vj is greater than this, uh, bi minus a divided by c ratio, well, then I'm going to get nothing, zero. Okay, so the question is, how am I going to form my expected utility? So I keep saying this, one level of difficulty in this problem is the fact that you have infinitely, I mean, each player has infinitely many types, and so the expected payoff is slightly more complicated, uh, fair, so for that reason, let me just briefly explain how we normally calculate expected payoff. If the uncertainty is a, a, a random variable, but it's continuously distributed. All right, so simple. I mean, imagine the, just a side note, okay? Imagine um, you graduated, you're applying for jobs, all right? And, uh, well, what you care is, let's assume, for simplicity, the only thing you care is the salary you're going to get, all right? Wage. And let's suppose you're risk neutral, all right? So uh, the W dollars means W unit of utility for you, all right? We, we simplify things. All right, so this is the wage, and it's the only thing I care. So basically, my utility is W. Well, but the thing is, there are a bunch of different options, right? Firm A, firm B, firm C. All right, let's assume there are infinitely many possible job opportunities. Well, that's a big, big exaggeration, obviously, but, you know, things become easier, trust me, if you uh, make things continuous. So let's assume there are infinitely many possible job offers and infinitely many possible wages. And again, let's assume this W, the wage, is distributed uniformly in 0, 1 interval. I'm not specifying any gain here. All I'm just trying to show is that in expected term, what would be his, his average uh, wage, expected utility, in a sense, if he goes to market. Think it that way, all right? So if you graduate, what is your expected payoff? What is your expected wage or average wage? Think it that way, all right? Uh, same thing, I mean, if I make a bid, 
what's going to be my expected uh, return. We, we are basically doing the similar calculations here. So how do we calculate the expectation? Well, remember, the expected payoffs are always summation, uh, my payoffs, ui, times the probability. Uh, I mean, i is player, so let's call it uk. Uh, the, the utility of the k outcome, and then the probability of the k outcome. And so we basically sum them up, right? When we, for example, calculated a mixed strategy, we always did the same thing. The payoffs times the probability that your opponent will play that strategy. Your opponent's uh, strategy play is your probability because you're not sure what action he's going to take. So that's the uh, uncertainty. So we just sum them up. But here we have infinitely many of them. So how can I sum an infinite thing? Well, integral, right? The integral is the infinite sum, basically. So my expected wage, let's call it that way, expected wage, therefore, is integral uh, what? W dW where w is coming from 0, 1. That's it. I mean, basically the expected uh, uh, value of the <coughs> uniform distribution, which we know one half. Right? And similarly, you can calculate what is my expected wage uh, that I get uh, at least, I don't know, one third. I mean, let's suppose you, you choose some sort of rule in your head and say, you know what, I'm not going to accept any wage less than one-third. Okay. So you're going to choose whatever job you have only if uh, this, this job offers you more than one-third. All right? So how do you calculate then the expected uh, wage? Is it again zero all the way to one? No, remember you reject uh, all the wages below one third and so all the way up to one. Once again, W, D, W. Okay, that's it. So this is basically how we calculate the expected payoff if the variable, the random variable is uniformly distributed. I mean here, the F of W, I mean normally we have F of W, D, W, right? Uh, but f of w is equal to 1 uh, because of the 0, 1 interval. And so I just skip that. So for that reason, let's go back to our expected uh, payoff calculation. My payoff is going to be, first off, 0 in some range. Remember, vj is distributed. This is distribution, uniformly on 0, 1. So for higher values of vj, I'm going to get zero payoff. So we can just ignore those, right? Because those Ws, some of those Ws will be zero. For that reason, I, I ignore them. But for other uh, VJs, if they're uh, small enough, I always get positive amount. So therefore, my expected payoff should be an integral, right, an infinite sum, starting from zero, right? VJ should be small smaller than this threshold, bi minus a divided by c. Well, what is my expected, um, what is my payoff? Wage, think it that way. Well, vi minus bi, vi minus bi times f of vj dvj. Well, f of vj is equal to 1, right? You can ignore that, dvj. Um, that's it. Okay? Any question? So the question is, well, here in the integral, uh, I mean, I have vi minus bi, and then I have dvj. Uh, so when it kind of remember this, right, w, dw, I mean, things don't really match. It's like, w what is happening? Well, there's nothing wrong with this. First of all, here, what the, the d... D whatever, let's call it dx. So this x must be the random variable. So what is random variable here? This is why I kept writing all this. Vi is not a random variable for you. 
because you know your valuation. bi is also not a random variable. Here, the only random variable is bj and vj. But I transformed bj as a function of vj, so there's only one random variable for you, which is vj. So when you take an integral, it always has to be dvj. My utility, my payoff, however, is independent of vj. Fine. I have another example where it's going to be a function of vj. Right? Uh, but that's the next example. So it shouldn't, con I mean, uh, everything is normal. Right? I mean, this payoff, and remember this is utility, does not have to depend on vj. We do have in this integral dvj only because the uncertainty player i is facing is because of the vj. Um, so all we have to do is, well, there are two steps then. Calculate this expected payoff, I mean solve this integral, it's not a big deal. Uh, I am going to get, let's quickly do it. I don't know what happened to this, but apparently it's no longer functional. Uh, so what is this integral? Uh, well, again, because this guy, I mean, if you want to write it simpler, I mean, if it is going to be simpler for you, I don't know. Uh, this is bi minus a c uh, vi minus bi um, dx, think it that way, all right? So basically, there's nothing function of x, so when I take, I mean, I can take this guy outside, right? So it's going to be vi minus bi, and then it's going to be integral uh, 1 times dx, and it's integral, the integral of 1 is nothing but x itself, all right, so x, I mean, this is vj, uh, don't forget that, um, well, then the boundaries, uh, 0 and bi minus a divided by c, so I know that uh, this is going to be vi minus bi, well, x is going to be bi minus a min uh, divided by c minus, and x will also be 0, right, so I basically subtract these two, this is how we calculate the integral. And so, in fact, you can just ignore the zero. So that's it. This is my expected uh, S player i. This is my expected payoff. So if I make an offer bi, not an offer, I'm sorry, bid bi, this is in expected term how much return I'm going to get. And as you see, it doesn't, well, I mean, fine, it, it doesn't depend on bj, it doesn't depend on vj, right? So then the question is, what is my optimal bid? I mean, the question says you guys should bid according to this linear function. I mean, yeah, but I, I mean, I don't have to. I will do it, I mean, I will bid this way only if it is a best response. So this here, we actually bring the concept of equilibrium. So I already assumed that my opponent is bidding according to this function. The question is, is it optimal for me to bid the same functional form? But here my bid can be anything. I mean, I don't have to really stick to this functional form. So what is the bid that will maximize my payoff? How do I solve this secondary question? Well, we just take the derivative with respect to bi and set it equal to zero, right? We solve the first order conditions. So, what is the uh, critical point for uh, bi? So, if you take the derivative of this function, uh, the derivative of this term times this, so it's going to be minus bi minus a divided by c plus derivative of the second term times the first term, and the derivative of the second term is just 1 over c, 1 over c vi minus bi. Set it equal to 0, and solve for it. Uh, so I, I send this guy to the other side, c's will cancel out, so bi minus a going to be equal to vi minus bi. I want to leave bi alone, um, so you know what, 2bi equals vi uh, plus a, and then bi equals one half vi plus a over two. 
Any question, guys? So this is the payoff maximizing bid. If my opponent bids according to this functional form. Okay. The question was asking, remember, let's uh, remember the question. Uh, show that there is a Bayesian-Nash equilibrium of this game where each player bids according to this function. Uh, A and C are the values that we're supposed to find. Well, if my opponent bids according to some functional form like this, in fact, a, a bidding function which is linear on my valuation is also, uh, I mean, optimal. So this does actually look like A plus C V I, right? Uh, so what do you think? Here, I, I multiply some constant C with my valuation. Here, this constant is one half. So you know what? Let's pick C equal one half. Okay. And then I add some number divided by two. But this guy, I mean, the question says it's just that number, not divided by two. So you know what, this and this thing will be equal if A is zero, right? So you know what then, my conclusion, there actually is, or there actually does exist a Bayesian-Nash equilibrium of this bidding game, a symmetric strategies and the linear strategies for each guy, and how we bid, well, we bid basically this way, but A is zero, and C is one half. That means our Bayesian-Nash equilibrium is therefore our bid divided by two, because C is one half, remember? That's it. So that's the end of the question.